Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. New Haven's one of those games that like right in the middle for me and that yeah, I was kind of, am I going to keep it? Am I going to purge it? What do I think about this? And with all these games that are being published, all these games they have, I got to make some very, very tough decisions. New Haven is a beautiful game. It's one of those games that has a pace it on theme. It's not a very interesting theme, but the components actually bring it to life a little bit more. I just recently reviewed La Strada, which is a game very similar to this one, but this one just pops from the table for me. I really like the components, I really like the use of color in this game, and I really like the artwork, and it almost pushed it over to something that I would keep. It's going to be inevitably something I would purge. You're going to get a little abstract game, it's very light, decisions are rather straightforward, although there's different ways you can go about getting what you want to do, and use these resources to build these buildings, blah, 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 blah. You've been here, you've done this. This just feels like something somebody would produce to kind of round out their publishing company versus, wow, this is a great game. We got to knock it out of the park with this one. It's probably a six or, you know, probably six, six and a half for me of what you're going to get here. When you sit down to play it, you're going to have a good time. You're going to enjoy the decisions that you're making. The problem is, is when it's sitting on the shelf. There's nothing about this game that you're like, wow, this is new, this is unique, this is the theme, this is something that's going to make me want to grab this off of the shelf and put it on my gaming table. And I'm finding that to be a very difficult hurdle for a lot of these games. You get it, it's brand new, it looks interesting, you play it, you know, four to ten times if you're lucky, and then just sits on a shelf and a couple years later you're like, I have this game? And that happens to be guilty as charged. So I don't feel like there's anything in this game that just pulls it off the shelf. And for that reason, not necessarily the mistakes that the game made. I think it's a solid game. You know, it's all about scoring. It's another one of those light, abstract games that looks pretty. But it doesn't have the X factor that we're looking for here. So this one will be a purge for me. I do, I do kind of like what it's going to do. And this is something I would tell you like to search out. If you're at a con, take a look at this game. Play it a couple times, see if it's something you want to add to your collection, something you'll find you want to go back to. For me, it's going to be a purge. Here's the box for New Haven. You can see it's a very striking cover. You know, it's probably been seen before, but I do like the colors quite a bit. I think it really pops off the table. I don't necessarily, I mean, if you play the game, you're going to say, yeah, I guess that's kind of what's going on. But it does lead you to believe it's a bit more of a dynamic game than it's going to be, much more abstract. You're going to have a rule book inside, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. Here are the charters. We'll take a look at those. Here is the player board. It's really kind of plain. It's just spots with numbers and victory points across the side. You're going to have these little screens. And these things are always so tiny. But it does have everything and the rules and the player aid and everything you're going to need on them. And they actually feel kind of nice. They could be heavier, but they are what they are. It's something that's uncommon in games that you see. You will get a draw bag. It's just kind of generic, but it is big enough to put my hand in, which is nice. So I always like anything that has big enough for me to put my hand in. You're going to see some more of these. You're going to have a player board. It's, it's an abstract game, guys. This is all you get. You get a little um, place here to put some cubes. You're going to have a tracker and then really just, just squares to put things out. It does have a gloss on it. It's double-sided, so the other side is going to have some pre-printed areas that kind of start you guys out if you'd prefer that. Then inside, you are going to have a semi-custom insert. You can see where all the spots will go. Uh, this, yeah, this is what's going to happen with it. So... Everything kind of went everywhere inside of it. You got a place for your tiles. You got a place for the little tiles. Now, these things are colorful. They have the numbers printed on. They're very, very good quality. Everything in here is pretty good quality. The colors kind of used are a little bit weird. You're going to have these tiles. They're very nice. You can see the different things that you're going to have. Those are four possible resources that you'll have on them. And then you'll have these that you'll have, the chargers that you'll have from the expansion. So everything fits in here perfectly, really nice, especially if it hasn't been on its side like this one has been. Good job. Here's a rule book for New Haven. You're going to see a picture of all the components, which is an A+. The setup over here with pictures and overviews. I always like these where it gives you an overview of the game. I like that quite a bit. Then it starts to break down the turn sequences. And it gives you examples of this. This is really, really good. Excellent job. The build your village, kind of what you're doing there to score points. End of game scoring, once again, pictures and examples. And some hints down here if you want to. There's the rules for the other side of the board and some variants that you can use. It's also nice to point out that the player aid, you know, it's on the components here. So really everything you need to know to play the game is here. That can be reminders. And this is really excellent to have. So here's the board. What you're going to have here is the tracker that will be tracking the resources. 
In a two-player game, you'll play with this area. In a three-player game, you can do this area or this area. And in a four-player game, you'll use all of it. Over here is we'll just have the cubes as they come out. Each player will grab a player board and everybody have the, they, they work exactly the same and you'll be putting those little chips down here. I'll show you how this works in a few minutes. We're going to start on this board first. So you take all of the little buildings, you put them in the bag and you're going to draw five out at random and you will put these out on the board over here and this is what the players will have available at the start of the game. Each player will also draw six tiles. They'll keep behind their screen these buildings. Six of these and they will draw two player tiles that they'll have as behind the screen as their starting place. And then they'll take one that will be face down. That will be a wild card that they can spend. So the first thing you're gonna do on a turn is play a tile onto the board. It's very easy how these work. So what you're gonna do is, is try to maximize this whatever best fits your criteria. So in this case, I would get one wheat, I would get one sheep, and one, two, three, four, stone. If I had placed it like this, that would be the same thing because there's no other combination. If I had placed it here, I'd get two stone, a wheat, and one, two, three, sheep. So you're trying to maximize your space when you play it. So let's say I did place it like that, and I would get the one, two, stone, and this would go up. I would get the one wheat, and then I would get the three sheep. And this tracker here would showcase what is available to spend. So, for example, I'm just going to place this here so you can easily see it. We do have two sheep here, so maybe I would play one of my two sheep, and I would put it on the two. The first one you play can be anywhere, and I would spend the two sheep, and now I have that. If I were playing something that was also green in a future round, it would have to be next to green. I could not play it over here. It would have to be in one of the orthogonal st spots next to the green. Now, that's, that's how I place it face up. If I were to place it face down, I can put it on any number space. Remember, I had three sheep. I could possibly place it on the three there, but I would place it face down. The problem with placing it face down does give you more flexibility, but it may be worth less points at the end of the game. After you place your building down, if there's still resources left, which there are, the other players may try to build something. So they might try to build this one over here or another one from their hand. If they cannot, then the resources would just be wasted. But if they could, they could build their own building on another player's turn. So since I built a building here, the other players may build other buildings here. Let's say there are not enough resources. So for everything that's not zero, I would draw another building. One from here and then replace it. And all these would be reset to zero. So that's how you will be able to replenish your hand. In addition, I would draw another harvest tile for the one that I spent and I'd be ready to go. So the round will end when this board is filled up and then you will score this board. What you will do is if the, you have a row or a column that's full, then you'll score the points. If they're all face up, you'll double it. So this is worth two points because it's all full. I would get four points for this. If this was face down, then you would only get the two points. So if you're able to get an entire row across all face up, it will be a doubler. Otherwise, you just score the face points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is your winner. So let's go over this one more time rather quickly. You're gonna pay a tile. You can slip this however you want. You will get the resources. So in this case, I would get three stone, two wood, and a wheat. Then I can play buildings. If I can afford them, I will play them onto my own player board until the board is full up. Once I fill up and I place one of these out on the board, it just has to be by its other color. I will spend the resources that are over here. Once I build, the next player can build off these resources, and I draw a tile for each one of these that are not on zero, then they reset for the next player. Once the board is full, we then score. You score double points if the row or column is all the way up and they're all face up. If at least one of them is face down, then you only score the points that are listed. Most points wins. Who should buy this game? If you're looking for a little light filler that you want to look good, it plays really well two players, although it can play more, but it plays really well two players. A couple spouses, you know, you can get a couple over to play with this, you have a good time. I think that if you had just you and your spouse and you want to try a game out, this is a really good game. It's going to be abstract. The theme is bland and boring. We've been here, done that. The game itself does give you some interesting decisions, and there are a couple of different ways to score to maximize your points, which I find to be a big plus. So that's kind of who I would 
say it's four. It, it, was, it was really on the precipice for me. I almost kept this one, and I have done a review of it, and I kept it. And now I'm doing a video review, and I'm going to let this one slide through. It's going to be a purge for me. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.